so we've got a 2015 Prius and we're gonna replace this, which is called the clock spring. And this is essentially a rotary contact. And if we look over here at the steering wheel, you know, there are many buttons. There's the airbag, there's the horn itself. And all of these electrical connections have to be made in a way that the connection can turn. So that's th what this thing's job is. These break eventually. So in this car, the horn doesn't work. Sometimes you'll have an airbag light or sometimes these buttons don't work. We'll turn the car on and we'll just bring the steering wheel to a straight ahead position. And then I'm gonna disconnect the 12 volt battery and we'll get started. We'll pull the airbag off. And our uh, best practice safety wise is to take the airbag and actually put it under the car. That way if somehow it explodes, it's sort of contained. There we go. And it'll sort of crackle and pop a little. There is, you know, an electrical connection here. So once this is pulled aside, we are powered off. We don't want to close this because we won't be able to open it again. All right, so let's move up to the front. Okay, so we've got two little windows here and the fasteners are underneath. So we've got this little panel to pop off and another on the other side. The airbag's held on with a little spring clip and it's kind of hard to see, but essentially there's a small, looks like a wire about the size of a paper clip wire, spring loaded. If I press that there, I saw the airbag here just slid forward. I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's allowed us to pull the airbag back and we're gonna pry these two little yellow plastic caps upwards. So I'll just mark this so I know which one went where. And like every electrical connection, this is the time to be careful. I see people rush the, you know, plug and unplug step and that's when things really go wrong. Okay, so we got that, that one. Now this guy, people just yank on him. There's actually a little button on these too. There's the button. So if I press that button, there. So here's our airbag and remember our best practice safety wise is to go ahead and slide that under the car. Okay. All right, so we can see part of the clock spring exposed right there. So we need to actually get the steering wheel out of the way <clears throat> to get the clock spring in there. And there's a sort of orientation for the clock spring. So it says five turns and I've got this little orange thing in the window. When these are brand new, they come sort of lashed together and sometimes I see them shipped with a zip tie. Now, like I frequently do, this is a used Toyota part. I saw these, you know, reproduction clock springs for super cheap. I just don't have faith in some of the cheaper parts. I'd rather buy a used factory part than a new low quality part. So anyways, five turns. So I would expect two and a half turns in each direction. One, two, half, okay? So we have to start centered. So I'm all the way to the right now. Our wheel is centered. So we'll go one half, two halves, three halves, four halves. In any case, I want to see this in that little window and make sure I install it like that with that orange roller in that window. So we'll put that aside carefully and we'll go ahead and unplug these guys. I'm real cautious to not pull by the wires here. Okay, so if you look at this plug, this goes to my buttons here. This is also a time when I could replace these buttons if needed. And here you can see the spring clip. I'll show you sort of how I actuated that. I came in from the side here 
and I pressed that, and that released the airbag. Okay, so next, we're gonna have to get this bolt loose. And this is where we could sort of screw up the alignment of the steering wheel. So we'll go ahead and mark this guy. I'm marked up here and right there. All right, so I'll get a socket, I'll hammer this off. And I might need to use a steering wheel puller or it might just wiggle off eventually. So we'll go ahead and hammer this guy off. We really don't want the steering wheel to turn and get lost. We have to stay centered. Okay. That came off pretty easy. Now, really going to pry on this sucker. Ooh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> you don't want that to come off while you're driving. Okay. All right. So, we're there. And we're gonna we're gonna loosen this guy up. There. Okay. And okay. All right. That came off. Okay, so our rotary contact this is out and these guys are in. So we'll unplug our in. Which are these puppies here? There's one. This is an airbag plug, so it's typical fashion, a very confusing plug. I'm gonna remember how I know these airbag plugs there. So that guy is spring loaded like that. Okay, so anything else plugged into our clock spring here? Let's look at the old one. So here's our two plugs in, and here's our three coming out. Oh, that one, okay. So we got this guy here. Okay, and in terms of what's holding it on, we got a catch here, catch here, and a catch here. So we'll carefully pry those free. One. Two, three, okay. All right, here's our old clock spring. <clears throat> here's our new one. We got the blue thing showing on both. They really do look the same. Same part number, looking good, okay. So let's get our freshie in there. Now I remember putting in an aftermarket clock spring recently and these clips weren't right. They were sort of off so it just wouldn't hold in there. And I decided I'll never do another aftermarket clock spring. Easy peasy going back in. Get my plugs back in here. <clears throat> This one went here, here, okay. It's looking good. Let's get our bolster back on. Good. Yeah, okay. So now, when we get our wheel back on, you know, we have many splines on here, so it is it is possible to have the wheel just slightly off. We're gonna try and get as centered as possible. But it certainly is feasible that after this job, when you're driving straight down the road, the steering wheel is just slightly off kilter. Okay, so I'm looking for my marks. And 
Now I think I'm one notch over here. If you look at the marks, go one over. That's, well, I might be one over still. How's that? That looks good. Let's go with that. Okay. We will zap this down firmly. The last thing we want is for this thing to come off. It's 19 mil. That's, that's on there. Let's see, we'll get these guys back in. Click, click. Okay. And our airbag. Retrieve it from its safe spot. There's Mr. Airbag. So this guy with its little finger, I'll show you that. It looks like a normal spade, but it has this little lock. Click that on. Click. And we got these two puppies. I want to be careful with these. This is the last thing. Click. Click. Okay, so it looks like we're all good here. Wires fold in there like that. All right. So we got these little panels to put in. But first, let's connect the battery and make sure we don't have any air lights, like an airbag light, and see if our horn and buttons work. So typically when we reconnect here, we're gonna see some sparks, and this is a special bolt. It's like covered in a soft metal to make better contact. So right when this connects, sparks, normal. Run that down. And I'll snug it up. Okay. Okay. I've got the key here. The moment of truth, as they say. Okay, we're on. And ready. Okay, here goes. Yes. <laughs> All right, volume, yeah, yep. Yep, all good. Hey, that wasn't that hard. I think that would have been, here, let me just throw out a guess. Having worked at the dealer, that would have been two grand. Just saying. I think we got that done for 125 bucks. And how long are we in on this job? 45 minutes? Yeah. Definitely worth DIYing. Just make sure and disconnect the 12 volt battery before you play with the airbags only real safety precaution. All right, thanks for watching.